Hey guys, what's up? It's Emily. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is, it is fall. It is Libra season and like the leaves are changing color. I really want to get into fall this year. I want to get into autumn and a huge part of that for me has always been watching like Halloween movies, TV shows, and reading spooky, mystery, suspenseful, haunting books. I have a list of some horror and thriller books for you in this video. If you're the kind of person that's like gearing up for their October TBR and like you really want to to just dive into that embracing of the Halloween season, I got you because this list is also up to 69% off on Amazon. Now's your chance if you wanna do a little book shopping, a little book haul for October reads. This is your sign, this is your video. I will leave all the links down below for you to check out if you like any of these books. So before I get into the list of books, I did just wanna say, if you're also the type that likes watching spooky movies, I am in a film called Intermedium, which is a little spooky. It's also a rom-com musical, but it is supernatural. There is a ghost in it. It's really fun. So I will leave that link down below. You can watch it for free on Tubi. I play the lead. I play Bridget Doherty. I'll just read you the log line. An obsessive compulsive teenager, who is played by yours truly, searches for a way to rid her home of the ghost that haunts it, but their unexpected connection makes it hard to let go. It's feel good. There are some spooky scenes. I think it's a really nice fall, late September, October film to watch. So again, I will leave a link down below. If you feel so inclined, please review it on Letterboxd. That would be amazing. Again, there is singing. I do sing in it. It's really fun. Let's get into these books now. The first book I want to talk about is called Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine. Valentine. Danielle Valentine. This book is actually the book that the American Horror Story show was based off of. And I started watching it. I really didn't like it. And I always felt that it wasn't the story that was necessarily bothering me. I don't mean any offense to this, but the, the way that whole creative team was working just was not working for me. But I felt that if the same story was kind of put in other hands, it might've been really good. So when I found out it was also a book, I was intrigued by that. I will read the summary for you now in case you're not familiar with the TV show. Anna Alcott is desperate to have a family, but as she tries to balance her increasingly public life as an indie actress with a grueling IVF, journey, she starts to suspect that someone is going to great lengths to make sure that never happens. See, like, that sounds so interesting to me. It already sounds more interesting to me than the show was. Crucial medicines are lost. Appointments get swamped without her knowledge. Cryptic warnings have her jumping at shadows. And despite everything she's gone through to make this pregnancy a reality, not even her husband is willing to believe that someone is playing twisted games with her. Then her doctor tells her she's had a miscarriage, except Anna's convinced she's still pregnant despite despite everything the grave-faced men around her claim. She can feel the baby moving inside her, can see the strain it's taking on her weakening body. Vague warnings become direct threats as someone stalks her through the bleak ghost town of the snowy Hamptons. Oh, the poor people that live in the bleak ghost town of the snowy Hamptons. As her symptoms and sense of danger grow even more horrifying, Anna can't help but wonder what exactly she is carrying inside her and why no one will listen when she says something is horribly, painfully wrong. Interesting. Kind of reminds me of Rosemary's Baby a little bit. This is listed at $27.99, but you can get it for 66% off for $9.59. Next, we have Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. This one you can get for 75% off. So when I said 69% earlier, I guess I meant 75%. This is listed at $27.99. You can get it for $7 hairs. So this is for fans of Verity and A Flicker in the Dark. I've read both of those books and I really like them. Midnight is the Darkest Hour. It's a twisted tale of murder, obsessive love, and the beastly urges that lie dormant within us all, even the God-fearing folk of Bottom Springs, Louisiana. In her small hometown, librarian Ruth Corn... Cornier? Cornier? I don't know. This is also an editor's pick, by the way. Has always felt like an outsider, even as her beloved father rains fire and brimstone warnings from the pulpit at Holly Fire Baptist. I'm just laughing because I think the word pulpit is 
a great word. Unfortunately for Ruth, the only things the townspeople fear more than God and the devil are the myths that haunt the area, like the story of the low man, a vampiric figure said to steal into sinners' bedrooms and kill them on moonless nights. When a skull is found deep in the swamp next to the mysterious carved symbols, Bottom Springs is thrown into uproar. And Ruth realizes only she and Everett, an old friend with a dark past, have the power to comb the town's secret underbelly in search of true evil. Midnight is the darkest hour is an examination of the ways we've come to expect love, religion, and stories to save us, the lengths we have to go in order to take back power, and the monstrous work of being a girl in this world. I also really like the cover. That's pretty chic, that like crescent moon going on there. Next we have The Witches at the End of the World by Chelsea Everson? Iverson? This one you can get for 44% off. It has a listing price of $16.99 and you can get it today for $9.48. Rage burns brighter than any spell fire. Don't I know it. Deep in the birch woods of Norway, magic courses through the veins of two sisters. For years they've been alone, but sweet-tempered Kaja, I think? Kaya or Kaja? Sorry if I mispronounce that, is tired of living in shadows and longs for a life filled with community, even if it means stifling her magic. Oh no, don't do that. But Minna is a witch through and through, with wrath always simmering just below the surface. Oh, I think Minna is my girl. Different as they may be, both will never forget the day they were driven from their village, the day their mother burned. When Kaya Keja leaves to pursue a new life, Minna is left alone in the darkness of the forest. Devastated and outraged at the betrayal, Minna casts a curse to punish those who took everything for her. What she doesn't realize is that this act will incite a deadly chain of events. Soon it will destroy everything, including the life her sister has lovingly built. But once a witch's rage boils, regret means nothing. She can't take back what she's already done. Someone will have to burn. Oh, oh, I love that. I love witches. I am a witch, so I will be reading this book. That sounds really interesting. I wonder how many pages it is. 320 pages, like quick read. I might have to scoop this up for myself. Okay, next, this one I really am intrigued by. It's called Ghost Camera by Darcy Coates. It has a listing price of $16.99. It's 10% off, you can get it for $15.29. When Janine, Janine, when Janine finds an abandoned Polaroid camera, she playfully snaps a photo without a second thought. But there's something wrong with the image. A ghostly figure stands in the background watching her. I can't. I can't fixate it on her. Ah! Moving one step closer with every picture she takes. Desperate Janine. Janine shares her secret with her best friend Bree. Together they realize the camera captures unsettling impressions of the dead. But now the ghosts seem to be following the two friends and with each new photo taken a terrible danger grows even clearer. So this is more for fans of like, like horror, like real, real thrills. Like if you want to feel scared, this book seems like it's good for you. I'm not a huge like horror movie person. I get very easily scared. If I watch horror movies, I have to watch them during the day. So if I do get this book, I would have to read this book during the day. Next we have, next we have The Whispering Dead, which you can get for 18% off. It has a list price of $16.99, but you can get it for $13.99. This is pretty highly rated. This one is rated 4.5 on uh, Amazon. Homeless, hunted, and desperate to escape a bitter storm, Kira takes refuge in an abandoned groundskeeper's cottage. Her new home is tucked away at the edge of a cemetery surrounded on all sides by gravestones, some recent, some hundreds of years old, all suffering from neglect. And in the darkness, she can hear the unquiet dead whispering. The cemetery is alive with faint spectral shapes led by a woman who died before her time and Kira is the only person that can see her, and so she's become her new target. Determined to help put the ghost to rest, Kira digs into the spirit's past life with the help of unlikely new friends and discovers a history of deception, ill-fated love, and murder. This sounds like if Intermedium was an absolute horror film and not a romance at all. But the past is not as simple as it seems and Kira's time is running out. Tangled in a dangerous web, she has to find a way to free the spirit, even if it means offering her own life in return. This one sounds good. Okay, next we have My Darling Dreadful Thing. This cover is creepy by Joanna Van Veen. Joanna Van Veen. You can get it for 25% off. Listing price is $17.99. You can get it today for $13.48. Spirits are drawn to salt, be it blood or tears. Ruse, 
I want to say Ruth is the name. Beckman has a spirit companion, only she can see. Ruth, strange, corpse-like, and dead. For, I have chills. I hate that. And dead for centuries is the light of Ruth's life. That is until the wealthy young widow Agnes Noop finds one of Ruth's backroom seances and the two strike up a connection. I don't know why I just got so creeped out. Like I can't even read this description without like absolutely getting full body chills. Soon Ruth is whisked away to the crumbling estate Agnes inherited upon the death of her husband, where an ill woman haunts the halls. Strange smells drift through the air at night. The mysterious stone statues reside in the family chapel. Something dreadful festers in the manor, but still the attraction between Ruth and Agnes is undeniable. Then someone is murdered. Poor alone, and with a history of hysterics, Ruth is the obvious culprit. With her sanity and innocence in question, she'll have to prove who or what is at fault or lose everything. This one might be too creepy for me. I couldn't even read that description without freaking out. Moving on. Next, we have Through the Midnight Door. This cover is cute as well. I like, I said that about the other cover with the moon on it. This is 10% off. It has a listing price of $16.99. You can get it for $15. 29. Three sisters, three keys, three unspeakable horrors. Sounds like Charmed. I recently started watching Charmed for the first time. Was not a mistake. Highly recommend getting into it. The Finch sisters once spent long, hot summers exploring the dozens of abandoned properties, littering their dying town until they found an impossible home with an endless hall of doors and three keys left waiting for them. Curious, fearless, they stepped inside their chosen rooms and experienced horrors they never dared speak of again. Now, years later, youngest sister Claire has been discovered dead in that old, desiccated house. Haunted by their sister's suicide and the memory memories of a past they've struggled to forget, Meg and Esther find themselves at bitter odds. As they navigate the tensions of their brittle friendship, they draw unsettling lines between Claire's death, their own haunted memories, and a long ago loss no one in their family has ever been able to face. With the house once again pulling them even closer, Meg and Esther must find the connection between their sister's death and the shadow that has chased them across the years before the darkness claims them too. That sounds really good. Next, oh, another cover I don't like very much. Don't like that. It's called Let Him In by William Friend. This is 56% off listed at $26.99 and you can get it for $12 and one cent. Ah, oh, I, don't, I don't like stories that start like this. <sighs> Alfie wakes one night to find his twin daughters at the foot of his bed. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm already like, I'm already good. Claiming there's a shadowy figure in their bedroom when no such thing can be found, he assumes the girls had a nightmare. I can't, like, I can't even go on. He isn't surprised that they're troubled. Grief has made its home at Hart House. Nine months ago, the twins' mother Pippa died unexpectedly, leaving Alfie to raise them alone. And now when the girls mention a new imaginary friend, it seems like a harmless coping mechanism. But the situation quickly develops into something more insidious. The girls set an extra place for him at the table. They whisper to him. They say he's going to take them away. I hate this. Alfie calls upon Julia, Pippa's sister and psychiatrist to oust the malignant tenant from their lives. But as Alfie himself is haunted by visions and someone watches him at night, what? He begins to question the true character of the force that has poisoned his daughter's minds with dark and violent consequences. Whatever this friend is, he doesn't want to leave. Alfie will have to confront his own shameful secrets and dark past of Hart House and even the bounds of reality or risk taking part in an unspeakable tragedy. This is creepy. This is a creepy one. I feel creeped out right now. I'm gonna move on to the next one. This one is the last one. It is called The Drowning House. You can get it for 10% off. It's listed at $16.99. You can get it for $15.29. Houses fall into the Pacific Ocean all the time. It, do they actually? Hold on. Houses falling into the Pacific Ocean. Oh, yeah, I guess due to erosion and storms and rising sea levels. I just learned something new. Houses fall into the Pacific Ocean all the time. Not one has ever come back until today. A violent storm washes a mysterious house onto a rural Pacific Northwest beach, stopping the heart of the only woman who knows what it means. Her grandson, Simon Culpepper, vanishes in the aftermath, leaving two of his childhood friends to comb the small isolated island for answers, but decades have passed since Melissa and Leo were close. Now they'll have to put aside old rivalries and grudges if they want to find or save the man who brought them together in the first place. And on the way, they'll learn a great deal about the sinister house on the beach, the man who built it, and the evil he's bringing to Marrowstone 
Island. Those are the books. Those are they. Let me know if you've read any of them or if they're already on your TBR. And if you end up buying them today, let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, please. I'm wishing you a very spooky October and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.